Hello, my name is Dr. Ali Piper. I appreciate the opportunity to speak with you today on behalf of the Lancaster County Medical Society and on behalf of my physician partners at Nebraska Pulmonary Specialties. I'm a pulmonologist and a critical care physician. I have 13 physician partners, several of whom have been at these briefings in the past. The 14 of us provide pulmonary and critical care services for all of the Lincoln area hospitals. As critical care specialists, we have the honor and privilege of taking care of some of the sickest patients in our local hospitals. We have therefore been present since the beginning of this pandemic and, had, and have had to continuously adapt ourselves along the way. To put it simply, we know COVID. We have seen the darkest days of this pandemic and today we are scared. We are scared, defeated, and desperate. And we are tired. So I kindly ask for your attention for the next few minutes. I also ask that while you listen, you keep in mind that my feelings come from my personal experience with COVID-19. I do not have a political agenda of any sort, nor am I here to place judgment or disdain. My presence here today is motivated by my desperation to stop what the Delta variant is doing to our community. I ask that you consider my comments with an open mind, knowing that they come from personal experience and knowledge of what is occurring in our own community and inside our hospital walls. In addition to serving on the board of directors for LCMS, for LCMS and being a physician, I am a mom, perhaps the hardest job of all. This morning, I woke up to find my early riser reading Harry Potter on the couch. My every side of the bed is the wrong side youngest was still asleep, but not for long. My husband prepared for his early morning run. I went for coffee. I previewed all of my hospital patients' chest x-rays from my home computer while the kids colored in their coloring books. I put my daughter's hair in a ponytail and helped her get into her Cinderella costume for the day. She skipped off to plan the next social event for her Barbies. As I diverted my attention back to work, I received notification that the daily COVID-19 summary had been delivered to my inbox. I was overcome with dread. It wasn't long ago that I looked forward to receipt of our local daily summary. I would open the email every morning with hope and relief as I watched the number of daily infections and hospitalizations dwindle and vaccination numbers rise. Hope and relief have now been replaced with dread and despair as our daily infections and hospitalizations are on the rise again. Frustratingly so, this was preventable. This is largely due to the Delta variant, its transmissibility, transmissibility and acquisition of disease by those who are unvaccinated. Please keep listening. I get it. I too am totally over this. I'm tired of talking about masks and vaccines and politics and side effects. This isn't fair. This isn't fair to you and especially not to your children or to me. I didn't ask for this. I don't want COVID-19 to be a part of my life any longer. And I especially don't want it to be a part of my children's lives. But I can only do so much and ignoring it is not an option for me. I understand that we are all trying to do what's right. And what's right means a little something different to each of us. So this is where I encourage you to think about your community and your people, not politics or social media, your conscious conscience, not your computer. I know there's too much information out there to process and insecurity surrounding who to trust. That is a fact, despite my best efforts, I have learned is no longer in my control. What I can control is my attitude and my impact. I don't expect you to tr suddenly trust my medical degree today if you didn't yesterday. But I'm hopeful I could make an impact by sharing my personal experience and asking you to see me as a member of this community that wants what is best for all of us. I would not continue to show up and fight this disease day after day if I didn't care about you or your children. I would not ask you to put on a mask and get a vaccine if I didn't think it was absolutely necessary in order to halt this surge. 
nor is it too late. I have my own children to protect, to raise, to love, and to hug every chance I get. They now have had to relearn that they don't get to hug me when I walk in the door until I've changed out of my hospital clothes. The numbers that Pat has presented to you today are real, very real. Two weeks ago when I was rounding in the ICU, there were 10 patients who were still critically ill from either having active COVID or no longer spreading the disease. Nine of them were not vaccinated. One of them was vaccinated, but immunocompromised. Of those 10 patients, four have since died. Three remain in the ICU on the ventilator. Two remain in the ICU on high amounts of oxygen. Only one has recovered from their severe illness. This was in just one of three intensive care units locally in just one week. These are just numbers to most people, but to me and every healthcare provider that enters these patients' rooms, these are people. These are people with names and faces that we learn to appreciate and care for. These are people we are losing to COVID-19. And this is a different loss. This is a preventable loss. These patients would likely not have even been hospitalized if they had been vaccinated. We all have a unique perception of this pandemic, but I encourage you again to think about your people and your community. If you're not in a position to help those who are sick, you can contribute by getting your vaccine and preventing the spread of disease. You can contribute by wearing your mask when and where it's recommended. You can contribute by masking your children. Our children less than 12 years of age have only youth on their side. And now, fortunately, masking in schools. Until they can get vaccinated, we need to help protect them. Their safety and security depends on us being leaders. Setting examples and getting vaccinated while they can't. Think about what ridiculous costume you would be willing to wear on, the ho on Halloween for your, the kids on your block. Or what ends you would go to in order to keep those same kids safe and healthy if their parents were in danger. Then consider that wearing a mask and getting vaccinated in order to protect them requires a whole lot less work. Our youth have put up with so much since March of 2020. Children do not like it when they are not in control but they are handling it with stride. They do like routine, structure, and emotional reassurance, none of which we've been able to consistently provide over the last 18 months. By wearing masks in school, this removes conflict, creates consistency, and creates a reassuring message to our children that they are being looked out for by the adults that they trust. My children look to me for guidance. They see me as a fixer and a healer and rely upon me to tell them when they are safe and what they need to do to stay safe. As parents, providers, and members of this community, let's be consistent in our message, if nothing else, but for the children's sake. I promise you, they are a lot less disappointed about wearing masks in school than they will be if they find out they don't get to see their grandparents again. <clears throat> In less than a week, my kids head back to school. Our morning routine will look a little different than today's. And one week later, they'll have an impressive amount of masks shoved in the pockets of their backpacks when they get home. We'll finally realize where their entire new collection of back to school, safe at school, masks had disappeared to. In less than an hour, I will be back at the hospital where I will continue to battle COVID-19 to the best of my ability please consider doing the same. I appreciate your attention today. Thank you.